box and you'd give us a string with the property name. Uh, in MVC2, you can say text box 4 and uh, just you know, m dot. And when you hit, uh, you get the IntelliSense and you can see all the different properties of your object. So now you get nice, strongly typed access for rendering out uh, inputs for uh, each of your fields. And, and uh, one of the nice things about these helpers is that they work off of the metadata on your model. So I'm, uh, I have this other project here where I have all my entities. Uh, you can see this uh, nice, clean, um, plain old CLR object, or what we call a POCO object that uh, I, I'm using a POCO support for entity framework here. And you can see here I can add a, uh, um, attribute, uh, data annotations on these. So data annotations are uh, uh, metadata that you can apply or attributes you can apply to your model. So what I want to do here is you notice here that this date created is, let me scroll that up. can't scroll up. Okay, so that date created there is all Pascal case, right? And what I really wanted to say is uh, maybe creation date uh, with two words. So I want it to look a little more like English. So what I can do here is call display name. Uh, and uh, creation date. I'll compile that. And now when I refresh this site, You can see here that the, that the label for method in my view, so I'll just show you that down here. We have this label for uh, method uh, against the property which renders out the label. That label for reads the metadata that we apply to the model and applies that to the, to the field. So <clears throat> now, so, some, so what I've shown you here with the add view was in MVC1, but the whole strongly typed helpers is all in MVC2. So another thing we can do now, though, is we can get rid of all this code. Let me just make sure I don't get rid too much. Here we go. I'm just going to get rid of all these uh, little divs. And I want to make one call to uh, a new method called um, HTML dot editor 4. And editor 4 is a, uh, uh, also takes in an expression against your model. So I could say model such that model dot, and I could say I want an editor for the date created or I want an editor for the date expired. But in this case what I want is an editor for question. So I could either say model such that model, which looks weird, or we just provided a simple overload, editor for model. Now when I hit refresh here, you're going to notice that it looked like nothing changed, but uh, what happened is that we're now using the editor for model, uh, a form of runtime scaffolding against that object, and we're just uh, edit, showing these edit fields. So to prove that uh, that's working, um, let's add a, another attribute to uh, my model. So one of the things you see here is that I have this ID field, which is the primary key, and I don't want people editing the ID field, so I'm going to use a hidden input uh, on that guy. So hidden input is an MVC specific data annotation that you can apply on your model or uh, your view model. And it, it tells us to render that uh, field as a hidden input. Oop. I don't know what's going on in there. <laughs> Sounds like a Jason Voorhees movie. So now you can see that uh, we're rendering out the, the actual ID column with, and we're just showing the value and there's a hidden input in there rather than actually uh, rendering out a text input. And I can even control that a bit by just saying, uh, let's see, oops, uh, display value equals false. So let's say I really, I don't even want to display the primary key. I can just change that to display value equals false. And now we're not, we're hiding that. So uh, I don't, I haven't yet created a template for question, for the question type. So what we're doing is we're defaulting to the object type. So anytime, we're, uh, and what the object type, the editor for the object type does is looks through each property, looks at the data type and says, oh, this is a string. What editor do I use for a string? By default, the text box. 
and, and it goes all the way down, and even with the date time, you can see that, oh, what editor do I use for the date time? Oh, I'll use uh, a text box. But let's say, you know what, I want, uh, I, I want to use a nice date picker for uh, every time that I'm editing a date time, I want to use a date picker rather than just a simple text box. So one of the things we can do is in our views folder, we'll add a uh, folder called editor templates. And then I'm going to drag in a template I created ahead of time called datetime.ascx. So uh, I'm just blanking. What's the Windows Zoom keyboard shortcut? Windows Plus? There we go. So you can see here I have this, uh, thank you, I have this uh, datetime.ascx file. So this is a template for datetime. And uh, the, by convention, the name has to match the data type. So uh, when we're rendering a datetime, we'll look for datetime.ascx in this editor template. So now, I'm going to hit Control F5. And I click in here, uh, nothing happens. Let's see, edit the templates. Let me try that again. Ah, there we go. I, I must not have refreshed correctly. So now we get this nice jQuery uh, UI uh, widget here where um, we're, we're using that for selecting the date time. Notice here that the date expires also gets that as well. Uh, let's look at that template real quick. So this template is uh, just a simple view user control. So much like uh, any time you create, if you've ever created a view partial before, it's the same thing. Uh, but what you get access to now off the view data object is this template info. So you can get information about what the field name should be uh, in the markup. And the reason that's important is that you might have uh, an object with a complex hierarchy and you have this nested object and the name is really hard to figure, you don't know the name ahead of time, so you can go in here, get this template info, and create these templates that are easily reused throughout your site. All right, so I just showed you strongly typed template and templated helpers, which provide a nice way uh, to uh, uh, a nice way to be more productive and hopefully reduce uh, code duplication. And another thing that does that is uh, validation. So with MVC1, we didn't include any built-in validation. With MVC2, we have validation that's based on data annotations uh, and uh, a lot like what you saw in dynamic data again. And we also uh, look at that, uh, those data annotations, the metadata you put on your model, and we uh, build up client validation based on that metadata. So in the keynote today, Scott Guthrie uh, referenced that point where the validation in the client is based off what you put on your model on the server. Uh, so that's really nice for uh, reducing duplication. And we also have a, a various uh, tooling improvements. Uh, you'll see me mention keyboard shortcuts. Uh, we've added several new keyboard shortcuts. And we've also added code snippets that work in the view. Skipping ahead. So let, let me demo that real quick. So what I want to demo now is a validation. So let's go back to this form and let's just clear out. Oh, whoops. Uh, one, two, three. There we go. 